talk about itemization changes. Diablo 4 just had its campfire chat and it showed the entirety of what they're gonna be doing in terms of changing itemization as well as adding crafting, how to get the materials for crafting and adding some different gameplay loops. So let's talk about all of it starting now. First thing they mentioned, they're gonna make a smaller pool of affixes, basically removing the stats that are the damage on Tuesday memes nobody cares about. Weird stuff like lucky hit on critical if damage over time type of stuff. They're gonna be simplifying these stats. They also mentioned that sacred items are in world tier three only, ancestral items are in world tier four only, so you're no longer getting drops that you don't want. They mentioned this many times, but they wanna focus on quality over quantity. They're gonna be reducing the amount of loot that you actually get, but each of the items should feel impactful was the way they describe this. Part of the way they are doing this is actually removing some of the affixes on items. For instance, legendaries are going four to three, rares are going four to two. There will be less affixes per items, but that is because of how the crafting works. We would just talk about something you might be thinking looking at this is, okay, well, this makes rare items worthless. What about the trading economy? Well, they're opening up trading now to legendary items as well. So trading can now include legendary drops that you get before you craft on them. This is one of the examples they use of a before and after of items. So you can see here, damage to shadow over time affected, lucky hit, chance to execute. And now it's just intelligence, damage, vulnerable damage. They're trying to simplify these stats. And you can notice it has three instead of four affixes. That is the base item. And you can actually go up to five affixes now because of the way the crafting will work, which we'll talk about in just a second. Legendary items are now always 925 power if dropped from a monster level 95 plus. This way they're really trying to reduce the amount of garbage items that you see on the ground. Part of the reason is they're still not adding a loot filter in the game. So if you're wanting a loot filter, that is not gonna be happening and they talked about that, but part of their logic was, well, we're gonna be reducing the amount of garbage that's on the ground. All of the items should hopefully be impactful. They're also consolidating materials, meaning all of these different herbs and everything you have to find around the map. Now it's just one type of herb. They're trying to make the crafting of these materials less annoying. They are also capping the reroll cost on enchanting items. So it no longer goes infinitely to the point of basically you can brick items. Uh, and they're, like I said, they're consolidating the materials and the forgotten souls are now dropping from whispers and rarely dropping from globally from elites as well. So they're just trying to make it a little bit easier to get all these random materials you need. The gyms, they say they're going to make simpler, better, and have a much longer crafting tell, though we don't go into more detail on that. We didn't get much of that during the, the campfire, but gyms are supposed to basically be better. One of the best received changes so far was the fact that the Codex of Power now not only has keyword search and filter, but also allows you to imprint your best version of legendaries into them. So if you get something that's a max row, you can put that into the Codex of Power and store that there and then reuse it as many times as you would like. And also your affixes of the legendary will increase with world tier. So your world tier three will be stronger than world tier two affixes, four will be stronger than three. So you'll be upgrading your Codex of Power and storing them there. That is supposed to do two things, one of which is supposed to be less annoying and make it where you don't have to sit there and make a mistake about like, oh, saving your affix for a better item later, but also will help with item storage because you're not gonna have to store all of these affixes anymore. This seemed to be one of the most well-received changes due to the fact that people have literally been asking for this change since the start of the game. Another thing about this is all legendary affixes are now here. The Codex of Power is no longer limited to just the ones from the dungeons. You can put all affixes into the game or from the game into the Codex. This is where we get into tempering. Tempering is effectively adding new affixes onto the legendary items. So you start with three and you can add two new affixes onto the legendary items. You learn these recipes and this is how you add it. These recipes here are these manuals that you learn. And once you learn them, you can use these in the tempering menu, which I will show you in just a moment. And each of these different manuals will have a number of affixes that could be applied. So there is some RNG associated with crafting the affixes onto items. This is what the menu actually looks like. This is the item beforehand, this is afterhand. You're gonna notice there's tempered affixes too. That is because you can add two different affixes onto them. You can temper it up to five total times, meaning you can add two and then replace it three times, et cetera, if you don't get the one you want. This is almost like forging potential from last epoch, for instance, you get five instances of activating the tempering and you can have two different tempered affixes onto items. So you can see here, you go from three to five of these affixes. When you go to temper the item, you're gonna have this menu show up here, which will actually allow you to select either offensive, weapons, defensive, utility, et cetera, based upon the item. For instance, this is a weapon, so he can do weapons and offensive style affixes. 
And you can see here when he clicks on the offensive category, these are the different manuals we were talking about earlier that allows you to see what the different recipes from using this could actually end up being. So you could select one of them, then temper the item, and that tempering item will slam on one of these affixes from the manual you actually choose. Hopefully you get the one you want, and you can see there you now have a plus of the damage. Something else that can drop are greater affixes. Effectively, you can get variants of ancestral items that drop that can have greater affixes, AKA the affixes are mega juice, which will have a 1.5 multiplier, a multiplier of the maximum row. So if the maximum was 100, you can get an affix that will drop with a 150 max out row. That is what a greater affix is now going to be. These only appear on ancestral items, but do in fact appear on unique items. So uniques can have mega juiced out affixes of really good stats. This is an example of, that they used here. The one on the left is a basic row. The one on the right, you can see it has these little red uh, diamonds here, and that shows that it rode two greater affixes. You can row multiple greater affixes on an item. This is very similar to like exalted items, for instance, if you are familiar with Last Epoch. There is going to be a master working system that allows you to upgrade an item 12 times. When you upgrade an item, it will upgrade all of the stats slightly, but then every four ranks, a single affix will be massively upgraded. A total of 12 ranks can be upgraded, meaning you could get lucky and slam that same affix three times. So the obvious combo is you get a greater affix of like a damage, and then you up masterwork it to four, it rows damage again, to eight rows damage again, and then 12 and it damage again. And oh my God, you got lucky, it triple rowed on the greater affix, meaning you can really juice some of these stats. This is an example they use. This is at rank two, rank three, and then rank four. And you can see critical strike goes up here. You can see the vulnerable damage goes up and then you can see the life goes up as well. And they said these other stats should be increasing too. This is just a display bug glitch, which is unfortunate. The reason it is blue here is you can see that this one has been slammed with the rank four. So it got lucky and that was the one that ended up getting the big single greater affix bonus. Well, not great graphics, master rework bonus. So this is went blue because it got the single masterwork rank four. So at four, eight, and 12 is when you get that. And it got a blue one. If it hit it twice, it would actually become yellow. They actually show an example of this because you can see here, blue is a single, yellow is a double slam. So this is a masterwork 12. There was three total of those major slams. It hit this one twice, which is why it's yellow. That one once, which is why it's blue. And you can see that it increased these stats as well. The vulnerable damage went from 38 to 55%, even though it didn't get slammed with those big single individual ones, it increases all the stats. And obviously you can see they had tempered this one as well. So the idea is you're going to want to temper, get the stats you want, then do the master rework on it as well. And hopefully you're doing this on an item that the original base had greater affixes also. Speaking of items, they mentioned that there's going to be a new Uber unique they showed here on my left, but then they also mentioned there's double the total amount of uniques actually coming to the game. So there is a significant increase in terms of overall uniques. At this point, they went into class update balance changes. I'm not gonna go through all of these. We're primarily gonna focus on the itemization changes and the in-game update changes, but basically minions are getting quite a bit of love. There's some nice changes to Sorceress. You can pick through the live stream if you wanna see more. We're gonna focus on itemization and in-game. One thing I should mention though, is the way flat damage works is actually changing. It scales based upon your weapon damage. So as your weapon becomes stronger, so does the flat damage and they're buffing flat damage in general to make it feel more rewarding for these types of legendary uh, properties. They are also changing the function of a lot of items to make them more usable for people in general. For instance, this used to be a core skill. Now this is just your skills in general. So they're trying to make it less limiting for a lot of items. Also a shout out here, they were removing the elixir of death and the cheat death enchantment. So now hardcore is actually hardcore. Hell Tide is giving an update. There is higher density. They're putting the blood tide mechanics of threat based minion spawn being added into this as well. And they're overall just trying to buff Hell Tide. So it's also a good time to mention that there is going to be an increase in experience across the board, a fairly significant one in World Tier 2, 3, and 4. A new boss is coming to the game, and Dario has been much requested to come back. It is coming back. Use the summoning parts from the Beast Device in Lord Xur, and now has the same drop table as Dario, so it is another way in which you can attempt to get drops that you wouldn't want from Uber Dario, but this time you can use the other materials for it as well. There's a system coming to the game called The Pit. 
The pit is where you're going to get the materials for the master working. So you're going to want to do it. It starts at level 100 and the pit is effectively almost like greater uh, rifts. This is sort of like AOZ. You can open these rifts, go in there. It, it continues to scale and become more and more difficult. And it's going to be RNG um, what's on the inside. You kill the boss at the end, you get some of the materials you're gonna need. This here was a uh, you know an early access version here that they were actually showing live of this. So you're gonna go into this basically a greater rift or AOZ type of rift. And it's supposed to be a more accessible one um, that starts at level 100. You farm through it. Very similar to what we've seen before uh, with AOZ, and it's very similar to Grey the Rift style, basically, is what it boils down to. But this is where you're gonna be getting the materials that you need. The other thing about this is this is going to drop the stones, and the stones are gonna be used for a new uber uber version of bosses. So now there's actually a level 200 variant of bosses that will drop you more rewards that are like Durio, Lord Zir, all of the lather bosses is what they call them. All of those style of bosses that you have to summon actually have like a mega variant of these bosses now that will give you better rewards as well in terms of quantity. So that is something to keep in mind. If you want to have an additional challenge, there will be a higher tier one. And my understanding of these bosses is they also drop a resplendent spark, which you need for uber crafting as well. So if you kill each one of these, you can eventually get yourself and you can straight up craft an uber unique. So that is a pretty cool way of doing that too. At the end of it here, he showed the different materials you're going to need to acquire in order to do master working, which you get from the pit. Then they wrapped up with a Q&A, and some people noticed that the camera seemed more zoomed out, which is true. Coming with season four, there is going to be a more zoomed out camera. So that has been a much requested thing as well. In fact, the Codex of Power plus the camera seem to be some of the changes people like the best currently in the game. Also announced that they're going to need to be extending season three. So that way season four PTR can come out April 2nd to April 9th in order to get enough feedback to make sure all the bugs are fixed, et cetera which means season three now ends May 14th, and that is when season four will be starting as well. So overall, the new gameplay loop is effectively, you go through the world tiers, you get better and better affixes, which you put into the Codex of Power. You continue to try to get good, greater affix drops on legendary items. You then take those legendary items and you temper them. After tempering them, you're gonna masterwork and try to get multiple, basically, crits onto the good affix that you want to buff up. At that point, you will just continue pushing the pits in order to get the material for the masterwork, and you're gonna need to do the pit literally anyway. So the new baseline entry is monster level 100 in order to enter into the master working and you're going to be going through the cycle of upgrading your gear continually by master working to rank 12 and trying to get good greater affix drops and then get crits on the right one and that is the new way you max out your power you're still going to need to do dungeons for glyph experience etc but the pit is where you're going to both be getting stones as well as upgrading your items and getting those master work items now uh, keep in mind that something else that they mentioned is that randomly monsters will give you loot explosions and also also drop monster or boss uh, materials as well. So as you're grinding this, you should be getting both these explosions of loot as well as you will get some boss materials just randomly from killing some of the monsters as well. Overall, if you're wondering my take and what it seems like the reception of people are currently is that the itemization changes seem pretty good. The fact that the camera is gonna be zoomed out, people are obviously liking and the codex of power change and the fact that it's quality over quantity should help some of the item stash issues, et cetera, all seem like good changes. The in-game changes and additions such as the pit and or the farm, the masterwork stuff and the new uber, uber versions of bosses that are now like level 200, et cetera, are basically uh, types of concepts we've already seen implemented in the game. So maybe that's not as exciting, for instance, whereas the itemization stuff actually seems decent in my own personal opinion. So that's where it's at. We'll have to see if you guys enjoy it when it comes to the game and the PTR will be out in April and we can all get our hands on it and see what we actually think about it ourselves. Until then, that is the recap and basically everything that's important from the chat.